All right, so in this module, I want to talk about some of the barriers that we have in our organization, barriers to Kaizen. Why don't we have uh, a culture of continuous improvement? Why don't we have as much improvement as we might want to see? And I love this quote. This comes from Bruce Hamilton of uh, the Greater Boston Manufacturing Partnership, or GBMP. Um, you might know him from the Toast Kaizen video that so many of us know and love. Um, Bruce has a great point about suggestion boxes that I think applies to Kaizen as well, about not blaming the employees. As Bruce says, many companies assume that the failure of the suggestion box approach is with employees that don't care. But if we dig a little deeper, we find that it's the system itself that squashed enthusiasm. And I think this is, this is really important. Um, we need to create an environment where people can speak up. And if they haven't been speaking up, we need to understand why. I think it's, it's very, very rare that uh, the bottleneck in this whole process is somehow the lack of employee ideas. I would guarantee you that people have lots of ideas and they've either been maybe taught not to bring them forward, not to bring forward problems. Those are things in the culture that we need to change so that people uh, can and will um, speak up. So we should ask why. You know, I think this is a good practice, not just in uh, detailed problem solving, but to ask why, you know, why uh, are we not getting the improvement that we need to see? And so in the book, um, Joe and I gathered this list of what we might call common barriers to continuous improvement. Um, lack of time, uh, people being resistant to change, which again, I think that's a very loaded term. Uh, a lot of times people are just being resistant uh, to changes that are being forced upon them or things that aren't really an improvement. You know, we forget to follow up on ideas. Uh, maybe people have lack of confidence, um, lack of trust, uh, fear of losing jobs, people jumping to solutions. You know, those are all things that we can, can work on. And so let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, I love this idea that comes from the late Peter Schultes, who really, I think, helps us challenge the idea that people hate change. You know, as Schultes says, people don't resist change, they resist being changed. And so Kaizen helps make sure, for one, that change is really improvement, and that secondly, we engage people and participate. Uh, that, that, I think, goes to show that people love their own ideas. We need to draw out their own ideas instead of forcing them to implement what we have come up with. I think an important resource and reference, and I recommend this book, very highly uh, by Robert Moore is the spirit of Kaizen. And uh, Professor Moore from UCLA, he talks about the connections between Kaizen and our brain. And so we might be tempted to try to tell people, hey, you know, don't be afraid of change. Even when it's good change, it's human nature to be a little scared. Uh, this is what, what Moore writes about and people talk about um, as our reptile brain, the amygdala. The fight or flight instinct kicks in very quickly. And so instead of just telling people to magically not be scared, the key point for more, and I think this is the magic of Kaizen in the workplace, is to make improvements really small. So if we start with small changes, implementing a plastic container for coffee filters, for example, people don't find that overwhelming. We can find time for that. We can take a little small risk to implement something and build confidence and build capabilities over time. So this is a great strategy for getting people to be engaged. It's to remind them we don't want the big, huge million dollar ideas all the time. That puts too much pressure on people. Give us the small ideas, that'll let us get started, and then we can get better at improvement and take on bigger challenges over time. So I think it's important to ask, you know, as we identify barriers to Kaizen, such as lack of time, are we making excuses or are we solving problems? We can make excuses and say, well, hey, look, uh, we don't have time, so forget Kaizen. But I think it's a better, more successful strategy to figure out uh, how do we solve that problem of a lack of time. Let's apply Kaizen principles and practices to those barriers. So for example, here is an, uh, an idea card that we might use in a Kaizen process. And we write down the problem, staff don't have time to do Kaizen. So what do we do about it? One idea is that we specifically schedule time to work on Kaizen. If the problem is managers don't have time to work on Kaizen, we can figure out again as leaders, what do we do to free up time? That's where, let's say, 
uh, the idea of a no meeting zone uh, for two hours every morning is very powerful. Not to sit in your office and do email, but to go and engage with people and work on Kaizen. That's a better use of that time. That's a problem we can solve. If there's no time, make time. If Kaizen is important, you'll figure out how to solve those problems instead of falling back on excuses. So the questions for reflection and discussion this time are, first off, what are the biggest barriers to Kaizen in your organization or in your department or in your team? And then what can we do about it? Can we shift from uh, the excuse mode into the problem solving mode and help kick off Kaizen as we eliminate those barriers?